The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for November 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we really do have a good show in that Tyler Haney from Bachman Industries shares with us a lot of the amazing new products that they are coming out with this month and for Christmas. Also this month, we've got part four of the layout construction segment on building that beautiful narrow gauge Blackstone layout. This is a section where we actually build the turntable so that all the models can sit around off the edges of the turntable with all their sound playing. And it's an absolutely amazing thing to hear and see. Also this month, as you can see, I am shooting this beautiful SD45 locomotive from Broadway Limited Imports. And this model is exquisite in that it's got all the detail that you would expect, plus it's got Paragon 4 sound in it, so it sounds absolutely fantastic. The sound is in fact authentic because it's recorded off of the SD45 Northern Pacific locomotive number 3617 that resides at the Lake Superior Model Railroad Museum in Duluth, Minnesota. This model is gonna come out with a multitude of road names. You can check out the Broadway Limited website by looking them up online and look at all the beautiful road names that they're coming out with, including a bicentennial unit, which is gonna be really exciting. So with that, I wanna make sure that you do check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast show that we shoot every Saturday night down here on the property, trying to keep you update on what's new in the hobby with special guests and our wonderful podcast crew. Everybody's dedicated to this, the best hobby in the world. And so with that, let's continue on with the rest of this November 2023 What's Neat. Joshua here for this segment of What's Neat. We're talking about the Broadway Limited re-release of their water tower that's motorized with sound. So check it out. I'm going to hit the button now. This is a great addition for any model railroad. It's DC with 12 volt, or you can use it on your DC system, DCC system, including Digitrax and NCE. This is a great addition. Like I said, it's a re-release. So get them while they're hot. The MSRP is $99.99, and that's a segment of what's neat. So now we're going to pick it up in this four-part series on layout construction as we launch into building the turntable, finishing the scenery, and then create a bunch of amazing runbys using this beautiful Blackstone layout. So sit back and enjoy part four of the Blackstone layout construction project. here is I've taken two 50-foot micro-engineering girder bridge sections and I've cut them down into equal spacing so that I'll have a 65-foot bridge 
to which we're going to build our turntable. So I measured this out with a scale, HF scale ruler, and I'm, I'm right at 65 and a half feet. So what I'll do is I'll draw the centers and I'll draw up the ends and what we'll end up with is, is a bridge similar to this in shape. I've rough, I've rough cut my 65 foot bridge for the turntable out of the 50 foot girders. It's going to fit right into here. There's two dimensions on this that are very important that I'm going to use for the router. The first dimension is the thick center before she tapers up to the edges. So this is the dimension that I'm set for. And I want to cut a very small circle in the middle of this turntable for that dimension. So that'll be right here. What I'll do is I'll take the router, we'll router out this circle first, and then we'll router out the second circle to the depth of this, and carve it up from bottom to the edge with a knife, and feather out the circle so that we have a perfect turntable pit made to order 65 foot, just what we need for this diorama. So let's do that. All right, because this is still sectional, this is wonderful. I can router it, not on the layout. The bridge is what dictates the depth of how deep we're routering. Right now I'm going to do the center section of the bridge right here, which will be a small hole. Then I'm going to go around and do the outside hole. And then we're going to carve out the difference in the bowl. So let's do that. This is real simple. Okay, the circle's cut out for the center section. Twist. Now I want to set the router to the depth of the outside. Now if you're going to allow for wheels, then you're going to set yours just a little bit deeper than what this girder is in length. So you've got clearance for your wheels, and then you're going to build in your track, your inside rail. So you want to leave a height for your inside rail if you want to do that. I am going to unplug this router. And get down here and set the depth. Oh, all right, where the teeth are. I'm gonna leave no room for an outside rail because I'm gonna carve the circle and do that with the router too. Now it's pretty good important you get this one right.
down for the inside of your circle, I like to take a piece of styrene and slice it and just put it on the inside. Gives a nice smooth round edge. I'm doing my final depth now because I'm gonna make the rail, the edge of the concrete the rail is gonna sit on. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go just deep enough to help allow for my rail height. And a little concrete edge inside the turntable. Which will be right there. Okay, this is it. This is a rough cut turntable pit. I'm going to drop it right back into the layout here real quick. Now you can see the bridge fits right in there. I've got the stepped edge around the edge. We'll clean this up with the styrene and have a perfect little display area for the models. And that's how you do that. Okay, I painted a diorama of the turntable pit with some brown paint so it's easier to see, to visualize, than it is the pink foam. I've roughed in the turntable bridge and I've got a microphone jack here so that the turntable will have power in it at all times by plugging it into this jack, and then it'll rotate. It'll be ma a manual turntable, just like the prototype. Now, how did I get it up to this point, what you see here? What I did was, I took the sides, a piece of wood, about a half inch wide piece of wood, scrap wood, and I took, I took the bridge parts and I drew a line and traced them onto the wood. Then I run it through the bandsaw to cut it to shape. And then I test fit everything just to make sure that the pieces fit together. I drilled a hole in the center of the wood where the microphone jack would be in on the, underneath. And I test fit this jack for power just to make sure it's gonna fit, everything works. I drilled a hole in the pit, in the bottom of the turntable pit, so that it would accept the female uh, microphone jack. I cut a piece of plexiglass disc, uh, just a small piece of scrap plexiglass, so that the female jack could plug into the bottom of the pit. I cut space with the hot foam cutter so that the plexiglass and everything would fit smooth into the bottom of the pit. Then I wet the bridge. I applied some Gorilla Glue to it, so as this expands, it'll be tightly glued. The sides will be glued onto the wood. And then I set it up with some clamps. And I use these clamps and just let it sit for about three hours. And that brings me up to the point, up to where we are right now, where I've got the bridge fitting in here nicely. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay wooden ties across the bridge, spike some rail on top of the bridge, and I still needed to do some finish work to the pit. I still gotta go back and glue my styrene in on the sides and then take some spackling compound and just smooth everything real nice and smooth so that everything fits, everything rotates. So it's, it's moving along very quickly now. Now there's a couple tips I wanna share with you on laying the track on the bridge, and that is this. Since the bridge itself is made of hardwood underneath, and it's glued together, so you don't want to apply full pressure when you're spiking into the bridge. What I always like to do is take a Dremel, and I always, I've got a slow speed uh, variac on this so that I can drill the holes in the wood prior to spiking, so that once you've got the holes drilled, then all you've got to do is easily put your spike in and you can adjust the position of the rail by turning the spike head a little bit either to the left or to the right and allow the spike head to help keep the rail straight all throughout the bridge. So I've got one rail laid and I've got another piece of rail here cut just to lay on top of the bridge and then we'll finish it off with the woodwork. The boards will go across the top and then color it. 
Okay, here's a photograph I'm using for reference to build this, this turntable, and this is in the RGS story, uh, volume number 10. And I'm going to talk about books and reference materials in this video a little later on. Now that we've gotten the rails mounted to the bridge, I'm able to put a level, run a track on each side of the turntable pit, put a weight on top, and what this does is this makes sure everything's level, flat, and true in both directions. And the reason that's important is because I've put glue in the, all over the center plexiglass now to glue in the center pivot point. And that will dictate how we tweak the rest of this turntable bowl out with regards to putting in the plexiglass sides and making sure all the rails line up just perfect. At this point, we can shorten and lengthen rails on each side of the bridge. There's a lot of little tweaking that can be done because this is a precision device. This has actually got to operate by hand in circles and be smooth. So that's why we're going to this great effort just to make sure that the bridge sets in. Now, this is going to sit like this overnight while that glue dries. Okay, now, so now the epoxy, what I did was I put some three-minute epoxy in this just to set it up a lot quicker so I wouldn't have to wait until overnight. So this is approximately two hours later. And now I have got everything set up. The table is completely level, and I spun it around just to make sure I've got track here to make sure the distances are exactly the same from one end to the other as it spins around. So essentially now what I need to do is I'm going to take this top and I'll put some planks on it to match the prototype photo that I'm following. The nice glued down wooden planks. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to stain it and make it all dark. Make it look kind of nice. And then I'm going to take these tracks and I'm going to glue them all the way around the outside of the pit in their positions of where they're going to be so that everything lines up when you line up eyesight it up the turntable. So that'll ensure that I'll have eight tracks here. The next thing that I need to do is to smooth out the inside of the bowl with some spackling compound. I need to put in the styrene around the edge to give a nice concrete edge. I'm going to run a piece of track through the bandsaw. And then as you see, when I fold it inside the turntable, it wraps all the way around and becomes my rail, which will help level the bridge. I need to work on the bottom of the bridge here. I still haven't actually soldered the wires from each pole here and onto each rail. I've got to do that and then attach this, screw this back in. The lip keeps it in the same position every time, so it's always level. So I'll screw that in tight, put a little glue on the threads, and it should work perfect. Now to start the electrical, I need to make a control panel. And what, I'm, what I've got here is I've got drawn eight tracks and where I'll put the switches and then a center double pull, double throw switch for the turntable's bridge so that we can reverse polarity on that. That's very important so that when you turn a steam locomotive around, you don't short out when you start pulling into the tracks here because as soon as this bridge turns your engine around, your polarity is then crossed. So we'll put a double pole, double throw electrical switch in here to reverse the polarity in the bridge. So every time you turn it around one time, the polarity will match the tracks going out. That's just something to think about. Now I've got my control panel. The plexiglass is a piece of scrap plex, and I'm gonna draw the shape of the control panel with this marker. And I'm gonna use a French curve to get me started because the back side is gonna be similar to a roundhouse curve. So I'm gonna curve it around like this. I just wanna bring it all the way around here. And that's where we'll have a straight tangent at that point. And the same for up here. I'm gonna bring this around. Lay my French curve out here real nice so I have a nice curve that doesn't interfere with the uh, turntable pit. And then all I have to do is draw straight tangents on the back sides. A line here and a line probably like right here. Okay, you can see I've got the turntable control panel drawn. I'll put it against this white piece of paper. It'll be very easy to make out. So now what I've got to do is I've got to cut this out on the saw all the way around. Then I'm going to drill holes where it'll accept the switches for all eight tracks and then the center switch for the double pull, double throw where the turntable pit will go, okay? 
I've got a handful of small micro switches from Radio Shack to install on this project. So what we'll do is we'll test fit those switches into each hole, make sure everything fits. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some tape and I'm going to put tape on this plexiglass on the underneath side and it's gonna follow each one of the tracks. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna paint it all black. And then when you see that I removed the tape, we'll take what is left that hasn't been painted and paint that either with gold, I'm not sure what color I'm gonna use yet, but spray over some paint on that. And what you'll end up with is the pattern of the track work on your plexiglass, plexiglass control panel, ready to be reinstalled back onto the layout. And it's gonna look really nice. And here's what our turntable control panel looks like with all the switches installed. These are simply on and off switches. Now this is gonna be wired up the exact same way that we wired the side panels. There's gonna be a continuous wire that runs from each one of these, so every switch has got power into it, and then the other terminal will go straight to each turntable track rail, so that we'll be able to have on and off capabilities to turn off each section of the turntable so that if we want to shut down the locomotives, we can do that. Now this, I took a hot foam cutter and I cut out just a small area right here, exactly the way we did the side panels. And this will lay right into the top of the turntable area. One other thing I want to talk about is a double pull, double throw switch. It's got six terminals on it, so that when we flip it this way, the turntable bridge will have negative positive polarity in each rail. When we flip it the other way, the polarity will change. The way we wire that up is very simple. I want to show you this on this paper illustration. The power pack wires are coming in to the first two terminals. These terminals go out to the track. We're going to run a wire across to each terminal like this. And what that'll allow is when the flip switch is flipped one way, we'll have power plus minus. When the switch is flipped the other way, because this cross parallels, then this will change to plus and this will change to minus so that we can change the polarity in the turntable bridge. The whole turntable unit itself is self-contained. All the wiring on this is completely going to be self-contained so that when we drop this into place on the layout, we'll only have to connect two power wires. And we're gonna connect the power wires to each side of the rails that are coming in to the turntable pit. And the reason for that is these rails will always remain hot. And so if I wire up two hot wires into the control panel to direct the power into each one of these tracks exactly like we wired up the blocks on the yard sections. Because it's all self-contained, once it's wired up, it'll simply get dropped into place, glued in, and then we'll start to scenic the top of everything. I used the hot foam cutter and I cut out a few grooves in the bottom area of the turntable pit so that it'll accept the wires. Now, I took the hot power off the main line instead of taking it off of the approach track because the main line here will always be hot. So these two wires, when they're soldered onto the turntable section itself, the turntable will then have power. The whole diorama itself will have power. Now I've got everything wired up just like the other panels on all the sidings where I've got my common electrical power it comes in through these two wire leads and it'll be connected to the double throw, double, double pull, double throw switch here, which will give me power to everything. This will power up everything and every one of these wires leads off to one of the tracks on the other side. All the wires are soldered in. My common wire to power all the tracks is run through this line and then each individual rail that's gonna be controlled with a block runs through this channel. So everything's clean. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of tape and I'll put it down over this area to prevent the foam that we're going to use to glue this all in together with. What we'll do is after I put this control panel in and I've got plenty of room now for all these wires, this will go in there real nice and clean. And then I'm gonna come along 
test run everything. Make sure that every track works. Run the locomotives through every track, run them over the turntable bridge, and that'll bring me to the point where once I know it works, I can come back and I can fill this cavity with foam. Fill it up, get a nice coating of foam. Then we'll take the turntable section that's completely finished now, self-contained, with two wires soldered to it. We'll tuck the wires down inside their appropriate grooves and we'll put the turntable down in place where it belongs and put some heavy weights on it so that as the foam starts to expand and fill the cavities underneath and ooze through the sides and start to fill the side cavities, nothing will move. Everything will be permanent. You won't have to access the wires anymore. Everything will function and be a permanent entity. What we'll do after that is this will get us ready to do all the dirt and the final scenery to finish off the scene. Okay, everything's set up overnight, and the foam is dry, the turntable is in, everything is solid and permanently mounted. All I've got to do now is go around the edges, and I'm going to cut off all the foam that grew out of the edge. This is the stuff that's expanded, filled the cracks, and oozed out the tops. So this section is completely glued in tight. Now the control panel's not glued in yet. I'm going to keep this out, and I'm going to put dirt on the whole scene, kind of make it blend in with the rest of the surroundings. Then I'm going to run through and paint very slowly and carefully, put some black ballast down along the track, some cinders, and just make the whole area look appropriate to that of an engine service facility where you've got a lot of cinders, just, just kind of just cluttered, dirty, nice looking realistic type of a uh, ground texture for the turntable pit. And that pretty much finishes this layout. There's not a, there's not anything really to do except for small vignette scenes, add a few little people, maybe a couple of buildings here and there. But really, this is the layout. It's complete. No layout's ever complete. You'll always find something to add, something to change, something to tweak in scenery. But the way it is, the way it stands now, we started out with what was going to be a photo prop, a simple loop, and it's turned into a completely operational layout that would look nice in any den, any man cave, or any family room. This is its own complete layout. And from start to finish on this video, you've watched me build that. Now, with regards to the mountains, I know I said I was going to go back and change Mount Schnevels a little bit. I still may do that, but the way the layout turned out now, I'm not so I'm not so keen on getting a run by. I don't need a run by. What we have now is a complete project. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've received and, and gotten something really good out of it that's going to help you with your layout building skills. Every one of the skills that we've applied to this construction diorama of this layout can be applied to any scale, any scale, HO scale, N scale. All of these tips and techniques can be used for your modeling future. So I hope you take away something from this. Thank you very much for watching. To finish out this DVD, I want to talk about the reference materials that I use that helped in building this layout. And I also want to end it with about 15 or 20 minutes of good run by so you can see the layout operating outside in natural light. So enjoy that. But first, let's talk about the historical stuff. First, the RGS story. This 12 volume set of books is priceless. They're available on eBay. I think a set will set you back about a thousand bucks by the time you get all 12 volumes. But what's in here are every mile of the Rio Grande Southern Railroad. All 160 some miles of this railroad are covered in these books, mile by mile. I mean, you can look at drawings of trestles. We used the drawings of the turntables to build the turntable on the layout. Uh, it covers locomotive 455 and its great accident that it had and the rebuilding of that locomotive with this new steel cab. All of that information is in the Rio Grande Southern Stories 12 volumes. Another good set of books that covers just the Rio Grande is Trails Along the Columbine. There's a lot, there's about nine or ten volumes of this book. I've got nine of them right here. And in these books, you'll read about Creed. The city, the wooden, the last of the outposts, it was built up literally a value of a, of a stone canyon, and it burned. It went right up the canyon, the fire took out the whole town. You'll read about that kind of stuff. 
a priceless set of books Mal Mallory Hope Farrell did, The S Silver San Juan. This was one of the first books on the Rio Grande Southern. And another one by Josie Moore Crum was the Rio Grande uh, Southern Story. These books are also available on eBay. There's a lot of priceless information in here that would help you with understanding how the railroads ran and a lot of drawings and plans. Mallory Hope Farrell also did Narrow Gauge Country. This is a magnificent book. It's got a lot of great uh, black and white photography uh, that is, again, a priceless resource. The last sets of books I'm going to talk about is Robert Richardson has done Rio Grande Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Rio Grande's Volume 1 and 2 simply cover the Rio Grande Railroad, and then Volume 3 covers the Rio Grande Southern. A lot of photographs that you don't find in any of the other books are in these books. The last set of books to talk about is Richard Dorman's The Rio Grande Southern Volume 1 and Volume 2. These are some great books. You can find them on eBay. Super plans, all sorts of pictures that you don't find in the other reference material. If you can get this type of material for yourself, this is going to go a long way in helping you understand how the railroad operated, which will help you understand how to design your layout. I know I've said this once. I hope you enjoyed this DVD. I hope you've learned something from it. It's going to be two hours and 17 minutes of fun. So enjoy the next few runbys here. There's about, oh, 18 or 20 runbys coming up. And thank you very much for watching.
For this segment of What's Neat, I'm sitting here with Tyler Haney from Bachman Industries in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for this November with an update on some of the amazing products that we modelers are going to be able to enjoy. Tyler, how are you today? It's good to hear from you. I'm doing very well, Ken. It's good to see you. Great to be back on the show. Awesome. So you've got a lot of exciting stuff that you're probably going to want to talk about today. Absolutely. We've got uh, some recent releases uh, in HO scale and N scale. These are items that have arrived to the Bachman warehouse and are now available from Bachman or at your local hobby shop, uh, with one exception, which I'm going to lead off with. And because this is a pretty exciting product, uh, okay. this is the return of our HO scale 44 tonner, nice. uh, GE 44 ton locomotive. This was something we announced a couple years ago, and this is the first time we've done it with DCC and sound on board. And it took us a while, you know, to go through development, and it's still in ongoing development to get sound on board into such a tiny little locomotive. But right. we were able to do it. This has a uh, soundtrack Tsunami 2 on board. It's our first locomotive with Tsunami 2. So it's very, you know, premium, high quality, 16-bit uh, sound package on board with all the authentic GE uh, sounds. Okay. And uh, this is one of the paint schemes we're doing in this run, the Union Pacific. They had one 44 tonner, which we have right here. I've got two more as well. We've got Amtrak. You know, Amtrak has been very popular for us the last few years. So this is the Amtrak number 1000. It was used as a shop switcher at the Beach Grove uh, shops. How they cool is passenger cars. That's way cool. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's something a little bit different, you know. It's another side of Amtrak besides just the passenger trains that, that everybody knows. Well, with over 50 years now of Amtrak in existence here in this country and all of the beautiful different types of locomotives we've seen over the years and passenger trains and shop equipment and switchers, an individual could actually just model Amtrak on their layout. And I've always enjoyed the idea of doing that myself. Absolutely, yeah. Amtrak, you know, is a really fun, fun thing, fun rare to uh, model and operate for sure. I have one more of the upcoming uh, 44 tonner paint schemes here. And this is the Strasburg Railroad uh, from right here in Pennsylvania, a very popular scenic railroad. This is their number 33 locomotive, which was their only diesel locomotive. Uh, not their only, but they operated it on freight trains and some passenger trains from the 1960s all the way up through the 2010s. So this is a uh, paint scheme that it wore, I believe, in the 1970s through the 1990s. Cool. Uh, and then there's two more as well, which I don't have right here, uh, Baltimore, and Ohio, and Santa Fe. So we have five paint schemes being offered, and these will be out early next year. And I'm just guessing Santa Fe will be in the tiger stripe? That's correct. How nice. Yeah. So that's our upcoming uh, product that we wanted to share today. Okay. And we also have some recent releases here. Uh, right here we have a very famous, very popular locomotive. It's, of <laughs> course, the Norfolk and Western J-Class in HO scale. Yes. Uh, they are now back in stock, just arrived a couple of weeks ago. And this is a, a special release right here. This is the 611, uh, the last surviving Norfolk and Western J, of course, in preservation All and right. in operation. Bring it up a little and bit. And this is the uh, Spirit of Roanoke version. Yes, bring Might it be up. a little bit hard to see, but you can see right below the cab window, it's got the Spirit of Roanoke lettering that it's worn ever since it returned to operation about 10 years ago. Very cool. Yeah, bring that up a little bit higher on camera. Absolutely. Well, there you go. You're dead center. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. And yeah. I can see that's got a shine to it, a sheen. So it's the excursion shiny the way they kept it for excursion service. That's correct. Nice and shiny and glossy. That's so beautiful. This is our, like I said, this is our really latest release. Besides the spirit of Roanoke, we also have 611 in its traditional 1940s and 1950s era paint and number 613 as well. Okay. And these also have uh, Soundtracks Economy on board for the first time in this most recent release. Okay. So those are available now. Got a couple more uh, recent HO arrivals right here. Our HO scale Northeastern Caboose. We've got two new paint schemes for that. We have the Western and Maryland Red, White, and Black, nicknamed the uh, Circus Flavory. So this will be a perfect complement to the uh, Western Maryland GP40 that we re released uh, a year or two ago. Nice. 
pretty sharp looking paint scheme from the uh, late 1960s. Yes. We also have uh, New Haven uh, here, the McGinnis, black, white, and orange. Okay. Very attractive looking caboose. It was a little bit of an uncommon scheme. Uh, they, I believe there were only three that were painted in this exact arrangement with the yellow ends, the uh, orange doors and trim. It's another very cool looking car. Yes. Available now. So that's what I have for uh, this month for HO. And then we also got some N scale releases as well. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move the J side right here so I can uh, show you our N scale Baltimore and Ohio EM1, which is back in stock. Okay, uh, obviously, a very big, impressive locomotive 2884. Raise, raise that up a little bit. There you go. Yeah, right sure there. thing. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little bit far away from the camera. But uh, yeah, these were exclusively owned and designed and owned by the Baltimore and Ohio. Unfortunately, none of them survived into preservation, but you know, we know the uh, articulated steam locomotives are very popular, your big boys, your challengers. So this is something along those same lines, but a little bit different, uh, East Coast, and it's a Bachman exclusive. So this is the number 7606, and we also have a 7628, I believe, is the other road number. Very beautiful. Two new road numbers. These have Soundtracks Economy on board, and they are back in stock. It looks very much like the HO scale model you had come out with about 10, 11 years ago. Absolutely, yeah. Both of them are spectrum quality levels, so our absolute highest end, most detailed locomotives that we offer. Right. I think that was back in 2013. We filmed those outside running and got some beautiful, beautiful photography of the HO scale models. And I think I weathered one of those to make it just look gorgeous. Yeah, I remember seeing the uh, the photographs of that. It looked, looked beautiful. Uh, HO scale version has been out of the line for a while, but you know, we always say, never say never. Maybe <laughs> we'll see it again in the coming years. I love that about Bachman. Absolutely. And I got a couple of freight cars to show off here as well. Okay. Uh, this is our... 50-foot track cleaning plug door box car in N scale. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with with it, this has a uh, dry cleaning uh, track pad attached to the bottom of it. So it's perfect to roll around your layout and clean off the dirt and residue on your rails and make sure your trains are operating smoothly. So we've got two new paint schemes for this car in stock now. This right here, you know, it might be a little bit hard to see what's going on on this side of the car. I'm going to flip it around. Oh, this wow. is Canadian National. And as you can see, it's got different uh, paint schemes on either side of the car. This was part of a uh, promotion Canadian National was doing to show off the different, you know, commodities that they hauled on their freight trains. So the other side has the uh, in black and white. It's got all different mastheads from Canadian newspapers to show that this box car was specially built for hauling newsprint paper. Nice. Yes. And you folks might be familiar with this Canadian National uh, cylindrical hopper, which has the rainbow on one side and is just a regular Canadian National on the other. So these were part of the same promotional campaign and were used in a display train for a while. So I think these are pretty cool cars, you know, if you want to work on recreating that train. And, it's, you know, it's basically two cars in one. You can show off, depending on how you have it set up on your layout, you can show off the flashy side. Or you can go with the more traditional uh, Canadian national colors. That's cool. Yeah. And I have one more track cleaning car as well. Great Northern Cushioned Ride. Okay. It, in their uh, very distinctive green and red colors with Rocky the Goat on the side. Very nice. So there you go. They're, they're very attractive looking cars and they're useful as well for cleaning your railroad. And then finally, uh, I showed these off, I believe, uh, the first time I was on the show, if you can, uh, the pre-production version. And they're now in stock, and I have some painted samples here of our N-Scale animated stock car. Uh, we've offered this car before in HO and large scale, and it's just, you know, it's not realistic, we'll admit that, but it's just pure fun. Yes. Where as this car goes around, curves on your layout, the little animal heads will bob in and out of the sides of the car. This Union Pacific car as uh, cows inside of it, bobbing their heads in and out. We've also got Christmas coming up uh, in just a couple of weeks when this airs. Yes. Here's our North Pole and Southern with the uh, reindeer transport. Nice. Little reindeer bobbing their heads in and out. 
And just to not leave out, you know, the folks who uh, wanted to stick with a traditional stock car, the prototypical, our regular end scale stock car is back in stock as well. Uh, this has been upgraded with body mounted couplers, and we've got four paint schemes. We've got the Pennsylvania here. Got a couple more if I reach over here. We have uh, Canadian National. And we have the uh, Baltimore and Ohio. Pretty wow. nice, sharp looking with the silver roof. And New York Central as well. Very, so very cool. animated stock cars and regular stock cars all are back in stock. Or I guess these are new arrivals, not, in, not back in stock. They're in stock for the first time. So all that stuff is ready to order from your hobby shop or purchase from your hobby shop, or you can order directly from Bachman, so. There you go, and Lombard Hobbies help support this show, and that's the go-to source. Absolutely. So is that what we have for the month of November? I have one more thing, actually. Okay. Uh, we've got, like I said, we've got Christmas coming up around the corner, and so our friends over at Menards uh, Hardware Stores. Yes. They've been, uh, we've been working with them the past few years, you know, with special train sets uh, just in time for Christmas. So, right, here's one of our exclusive uh, Menards train sets uh, in HO scale. They should be in stock at Menards uh, in their stores and on their website, menards.com, by the time this airs. Very cool. So this is the Eagle Express with the uh, CSX GP40. It's got three freight cars and the caboose, and it's also got some accessories here. You've got your people you've got your telephone poles you've got your railroad signs so it's a nice way to you know not only get your train set uh up and running uh but to, you know start building out the scenery as well there you go and then over here got the uh, midwest limited uh this features the chicago and northwestern railroad we've got an f7 and matching caboose and a cp rail boxcar in the pennsylvania gondola so I imagine a lot of these people uh, watching this, you know, are experienced modelers, but if you're looking to, you know, maybe get your son or daughter or friends into model railroading for the first time, those Menards uh, exclusive train sets are a way, great way to get started. That is very, So that's very what cool. I've got for, uh, for this month. Tyler, I want to thank you so much for being on the show uh, today and showing us all the beautiful eye candy. And so with that, that is this segment for What's Neat. All the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting-edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at Broadway-Limited.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. 